if you ever are so unbelievably thirsty peeing all the time losing lots of weight your vision is changing and having problems and you feel like crap take your blood sugar because there could be a real problem <laughs> and if it goes missed you could die so we don't need anyone dying here hi i'm hannah and welcome back to my channel i wanted to do a story time of my diagnosis because it's not every day you get diagnosed with type 1 diabetes during a global pandemic. It all started in January of this year, 2020. And I got very sick. I was sick for probably three weeks and all my kids had it as well. We didn't go to the doctor or anything. Could have been the flu, could have been coronavirus, I don't know. Finally, everyone recovered from that. But then I just still felt bad. And you know when you're sick and you get so dehydrated, I never got rehydrated. And I started feeling so, so thirsty. I would just drink literally gallons of water and still be so thirsty. And then I had to pee, like, every few minutes all day long and through the night. I couldn't sleep through the night, drinking water and peeing all the time. And that should have been alarming that there was a problem, but I was just like, wow, I'm being super healthy and drinking all the water I'm supposed to and that's making me have to pee a lot. While I was sick those first three weeks, I lost a considerable amount of weight. But then once the sickness went away, I still continued to lose weight. like drastically. At first I was like, heck yeah, this is awesome because who doesn't like to <laughs> lose lots of weight? But it got to a point where I was kind of concerned because I was not actively trying to lose weight and it was just falling off pounds at a time. And I ended up losing like 35 pounds in a matter of six to eight weeks. And it was, it was kind of scary. I just was feeling pretty crappy, tired all the time, just felt like I was hit by a bus. One night, my husband woke me up and he was like, dude, you are breathing weird. I said, no, I'm not, go to bed, why are you waking me up? Like, so annoyed with him, but apparently I was, very shortness of breath, was breathing as if I was trying to do like hard labor or something, but we were sleeping. All of those symptoms combined is a typical type one diabetes diagnosis, but, I did not know any of that, so we carried on and we're into February now. I went to a Carol King Broadway musical show with my mom. I'm not around her that often, but while we were together that night, she noticed that I was drinking so much and she was thinking about it and she let me know the next day. You know, some of these symptoms are diabetes related. Maybe you should go get a meter to check your blood sugar. I'm like, I, there's no way I have diabetes, that's ridiculous. But a quick Google search, lo and behold, uh, extreme thirst, peeing all the time, unexplained weight loss, after being sick, all came up. I'm like, how did I not know this and this was going on for several weeks? <laughs> um, another symptom that I was having and didn't notice was a problem. I had blurry vision, but I have had problems with my eyesight ever since I was a young child. and. That wasn't something that would be concerning to me for my eyesight to be changing because it does all the time. But I would be looking at something and it would go in and out of focus real quick. It wasn't until I was Googling for diabetes symptoms that I read all that and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have so many things going wrong with me that until you put them together, in a list, you don't realize that there is something seriously wrong with you. <laughs> I had my husband bring a meter home, and it's so funny, I remember being so scared for him to prick my finger for the first time. If you know anything, you get used to being poked with needles all the time. But I was so scared, and like I had to close my eyes and hold my finger out like this, and he took my blood sugar for the first time ever, and the meter just said hi. We read the instructions, and that meant that my blood sugar was over 600. Your blood sugar level normally should be around 100 for an average person. 600 is obviously not good. I started to Google and I'm typing away and looking up charts of normal blood sugar ranges and pre-diabetic and diabetic 
and 600 and above sometimes wasn't even on any of these charts you should see a medical professional or you need to go to the hospital and one of the charts just said danger i'm like well this is terrible <laughs> i'm going to die like what is going on we should have just gone to the hospital but we got into the doctor's office the next day and everything seemed to go fine got me right in but it is unusual for a adult to be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes so this whole time without me knowing it they're thinking i am a type 2 diabetic which they are completely different things being completely different I wasn't getting the right treatment. So they sent me home with metformin and said, see you in three months. Even just having a weekend of Googling, I knew enough to know metformin wasn't gonna do a single thing to help me. I had to call the doctor's office and I said, I need to get back in. This is not gonna work. It's not gonna be safe for me to go three months without getting my hands on some insulin. They were like, well, you can come back if you want to. And, and then I was like, did y'all even take the labs to determine if it was type one? And they said, no. I said, can we? Well, you can come back in if you want. I'm like, you should want me to. We argued on the phone for a good while. I go back to the doctor's office. They were like, oh, this metformin's not helping. Let's add some insulin. I said, that's a wonderful idea. Let's add some insulin. So we did, started off with one shot a day. That wasn't bringing it down fast enough either. So I went back to the doctor's office. And meanwhile, it's $100 every time you walk in there. So the bills were racking up at this point. Made it back in there. I specifically asked for the GAD um, antibodies test that they do to diagnose you as a type 1 diabetic. And I asked for it. And this whole time I thought they had done it. Well, it turns out they never did it. So that was a whole wasted appointment. I don't even know what they did at that appointment. Managed to get back in. They also gave me the Novelin. My blood sugars finally had came down for the first time. Now, after that, it was all the wrong insulin. And I started going low all the time. And it did not matter what I ate. I was crashing every few hours. I finally got a referral to an endocrinologist. And they called and I was so excited. And they're like, okay, we're gonna schedule you for May 19th, which was like 11 weeks until that time. I said, can I not get any sooner? And apparently no. <laughs> so I just had to hang tight with my incorrect diagnosis, my incorrect treatment, and just try to not die this entire time. Luckily, because of COVID, people started canceling their endocrinologist appointments. So I was bugging them and I said, put me on the waiting list. I want to get in sooner. I was being real annoying, I'm sure. And they called and they said, we have one this afternoon. And that's how much notice I had. I said, yes, I'll take it. And I went to my appointment. For starters, I am nervous meeting new people new doctors and going to places for the first time. That was nerve wracking on its own, but I show up there and these nurses are outside in like full hazmat suits, taking my temperature before I can go in. And then this whole building is under construction and the only thing that looks normal is the elevator that I have to get on. Well, I'm just walking right into this horror movie and <laughs> it was just very, very nerve wracking and scary. So I finally get into this appointment that I've been waiting weeks for. The first while, it's just a lot of confusion. They're asking a lot of questions, stuff I thought was irrelevant. Turns out on all my paperwork, of course it says type two diabetes. What they were reading from all the other doctor's appointments that I had just had was all misinformation. It was all wrong. But it wasn't till near the end of the first appointment that this nurse knew that I knew what I was talking about, I guess. So she gave me the time of day to explain myself and I was like, this is all wrong and this is the lab test that we need to do. We need to change all this diagnosis to type one. And they were like, oh, that makes way more sense. I said, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to me. My very first appointment sent off for the GAD antibodies blood test, which I had asked for several weeks prior. So I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Got a phone call from them. It is positive. What is considered normal is five and under if you have any antibodies in your blood. Well, mine was like 190 something, I think. 
And so it was definitely positive that confirmed that it was a type one diagnosis. They think it happened when I was sick. So the flu, coronavirus, possibly, whatever virus it was, then attacked my beta cells and stopped all insulin production. Having that lab be positive, no brainer, type one diabetic. All of a sudden, randomly because of a virus. All of this sucks, really, but I was so relieved to be heard because it's notorious for my situations to usually be that they think I'm completely crazy and then I end up being right in the end. And that has happened more often than I would have liked for it to. Now we're trying to figure out a new normal and what that looks like. Currently I'm doing multiple daily injections with still the not right treatment because I will be getting on my insulin pump and I chose the T-Slim X2. Really hoping next week that I get that put on. But again, the coronavirus is messing all this up because the nurse that is supposed to train me on the pump is not working. And so I'm just kind of hanging out until she goes back to work. Blood sugars are still everywhere. <laughs> There's my diagnosis story. It's kind of crazy and kind of scary and very random and all of a sudden. But just wanted to tell people, adults can get type 1 diabetes, even if it's not in your family anywhere. And make sure that anyone struggling is an advocate for their own health. And if you know you are not treated correctly, or you know something has been done wrong with a doctor's office or whatever, stand up for yourself because it ends up falling in your own hands what kind of healthcare that you receive and how tr people treat you. And so I'm glad to be done with that portion of this and I have a team of people that really are working hard to get everything stable as fast as they can and that's been a real blessing, finally. And I also found out later that I was starting the process that's called diabetic ketoacidosis. And that's basically when there's so much glucose in your blood that everything starts shutting down and you die. <laughs> and to look back later and to find out that you were like literally dying, it was disconcerting and I was just like, how many times in my life am I going to be near death and have no idea, which has been a couple, but we can touch on that later. <laughs> Luckily, my mom knew enough to have me check my blood sugar because it would have been a few days, maybe a week later, and I bet I would have been in the hospital with severe DKA problems. So, thank you, mom. Well, thank you for watching this far, and please subscribe to my channel. I am going to be doing tips and tricks and following my diabetic journey and lots of fun videos like when my family goes to the lake and budgeting which I think is so fun <laughs> and mom stuff. I hope you all have an amazing day and thank you for watching. So did the coronavirus cause my diabetes? Do you think it did? because screw you coronavirus, you made my life very complicated.